Hey everybody, it's Dr. J, and today, yesterday, we're talking about valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. Let's talk chemistry. With the Vesper theory, we have to talk about lone pairs. So there are instances, right, when we've done our Lewis structures, where you might have a lone pair on your central atom. Geometries are going to be a little bit different if you have lone pairs or not. So essentially, uh, electron geometry, right, is the arrangement of your electron groups. Molecular geometry is the arrangement of your atoms. So your electron geometry is including those lone pairs. So lone pair electrons, all right, are basically going to have a greater repulsion than your, you know, your standard bonding electrons, which are bonds, okay? So because it has this greater effect, um, those lone pairs are actually a little bit larger compared to your bonding pairs. So we look here, right? Say I got my nucleus and I got a lone pair on here. We're going to see that, right? The lone pairs are a little bit bigger, right? And because they're a little bit bigger, that's going to impact how these bonds are going to be interacting with each other. Um, so you could think of this as, so with water, right? If we was supposed to like do the, you know, water, if you do the Lewis structure, it's going to have the two hydrogens and then there's two lone pairs on the oxygen, right? Um, ideally, right, that would be tetrahedral, right? There's four electron groups in total. Give me a tetrahedral, 109.5 uh, bond angle. However, we got to impact, right, those, taking account, those lone pairs. So because we have those two lone pairs, that's going to impact our actual molecular geometry, right? So these lone pairs, because they're bigger, is actually going to be squeezing in, right, these hydrogen hot hydrogen bond angles, right? In this case, it's actually 104.5 between these here. Because lone pairs are impacting, right, our bond angles, that's going to impact everything else. So let's talk about that, right? So let's say we got a tetrahedral electron geometry, right? Four electron groups. But depending on how many lone pairs you have, that's going to impact, right, the type of shape you will have. So if I have tetrahedral uh, electron geometry, and let's say I have one of those is a lone pair. So if one of those is a lone pair, then this will be called trigonal pyramidal shape. Or if you have four electron groups around the central atom and two are long pairs, then you're going to have a bent shape. So let's look at some examples, right? Uh, we got CH4. There's no long pairs. So it's just tetrahedral. Um, and we can see the bond angle is 109.5 all across. If I add one long pair, in this case NH3, we're going to have a long pair on this nitrogen, right? Because we have a lone pair in this nitrogen, that's going to impact the bond angles between our hydrogens. In this case, it's actually going to decrease it right, to 107, um, which in this case, this is a trigonal pyramidal shape. So let's talk about trigonal bipyramidal electron geometry, right? Um, so this is when we have five electron groups around the central atom. And what happens, right, if you have a couple of lone pairs on them? So let's see. So the lone pair is actually on the equatorial uh, position here. All right. So it's on the side, not the top. Okay. Um, as well, if you have five electron groups around your central atom, but say two are a lone pair. If two are a lone pair, now you got a T shape. All right. So in this example, we got a little structure, right? Uh, BRF3. And in this case, the two lone pairs are going to be here. So the electron geometry it's going to be trigonal bipyramidal, right? Five electron groups. However, the molecular geometry, when we're just talking about the atoms, it's actually T-shaped, right? And it looks like a T in this case. And then lastly, let's say we got uh, this one right here, this example, to where we still got five electron groups, right? We got five electron groups here. And we have our fluorine, fluorine, three uh, lone pairs all on our xenon here. And because we have three lone pairs, that's going to impact what we actually have. In this case, it's going to be linear, right? So the molecular geometry is linear, which we see here. And lastly, we have octahedral electron geometry. So this is where we have six electron groups around the central atom. And if we got one that is going to be a lone pair, then that's going to be a square pyramidal geometry, right? 
So this little structure here, BRL5, um, you know, it's normally octahedral, but the molecular geometry is just going to be square pyramidal. And, you know, these geometries sound as they look square pyramidal, right? So it looks as it sounds. Uh, for some of them, uh, six electron groups around, but say we got two lone pairs, this is going to be square planar. So in this case, right, we got our two electron groups uh, with our other four. So we have octahedral, but the molecular geometry is square planar because we have those two lone pairs. Everybody to summarize this, right, got this little chart here. So take a picture, whatever you want to do, pause me. Um, we're about to shoot through these real fast. Um, you got two electron groups. But if two two of them are bonding groups, right, but no lone pairs, it's going to be linear and linear for both your electron and your molecular with your bond angle at 180. We got an example here. Um, if you got three electron groups, three bonding groups, right, no lone pairs, you're going to have trigonal planar for both, 120. Um, if you got, once again, in this case, we have three electron groups, but one of them is a lone pair. Um, still going to be trigonal planar, right? But we're going to have bent as our molecular geometry. If we have four electron groups, no lone pairs, we're going to have tetrahedral, okay? 109.5. If we have four electron groups, but one of them is a lone pair, we still have electron geometry of tetrahedral, but we got trigonal plane, pyramidal, right? For molecular geometry. Um, if we have four electron groups, two of them bonding, two of them are lone pairs in this case, still tetrahedral because it's four electron groups, but we have a bent molecular geometry. If we have five uh, electron groups, five being bonding, no lone, lone pairs, right? Trigonal, bipyramidal, right? We got our examples over here. If we have five electron groups, one lone pair, you're going to see a seesaw for your molecular geometry. Still going to be trigonal bipyramidal for your electron geometry here. Molecular is going to be different. Um, if we got five electron groups, two lone pairs, in this case, electron geometry is still trigonal bipyramidal, but the molecular geometry is T-shaped here. All right. If you got five electron groups, in this case, three lone pairs. Then you have a linear molecular geometry with this example here. Once again, everybody, are you taking pictures? Are you taking pictures, right? Please take pictures, screenshot me, whatever. Um, this is very, very good graph here to take pictures of. And then lastly, um, we got six electron groups, no lone pairs. You're going to have octahedral for your uh, electron and molecular geometry over here as an example. Six electron groups, one of them is a lone pair. You're going to have a square pair middle. Here's an example over here. And then if you got six electron groups, still octahedral, but two of them are lone pairs, so you're going to have a square planar. Here's an example right here, right? So um, I got some examples of y'all. I want to give them a try. Here are some examples. Predict the geometry. Let me know in the comments what you think the geometries are for these here. Um, if you guys want to see the answer to these, just put it in the comments. We could definitely do a video about these here. If not, definitely take a screenshot, rewind this video. This was a long one, um, but this is a very important theory you want to know.